So we have the director, Brad Abrahams, and the artist himself, uh, David Huggins. How, how are you guys doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Yeah, excellent here in in rainy Florida. <laughs> oh. It's actually, believe it or not, it's raining in Los Angeles, too, which is very rare. Um, but then, thank you guys for being on the show this morning. I, I gotta say, I, I saw the, uh, the documentary last night, loved it. And, uh, and David, my girlfriend loves your paintings. She actually oh, was, wonderful. yeah, she, she was like, I wonder if he ever exhibits in, uh, LA. Um, oh, actually, do, do you? actually, um, yeah, he, in, um, the beginning of June, I'll get you the exact date. I think it's like June 5th. Uh, or eighth, actually, there in Burbank, there's going to be an exhibit called "We Are Not Alone," and it's at Hyena Gallery, and it's about the abductee experience. And Dave, there'll be a few of David's prints and some DVDs and, and posters from the film. Oh my God. It. She's gonna freak out. Yeah, she, she I guess, and David, <laughs> she loves your artwork. Um, you know, that's a really cool gallery, actually, in Hyena. I know the owner. Um, go to I go to a lot oh. of his uh, showings. It's a good location, but it's a really cool place. He has all sorts of cool uh, mm-hmm. um, art and uh, and and uh, other stuff on sale there. Um, but yeah, good spot for that. All right, so uh, Brad, how did you come across David's art, and what inspired you to make this documentary? Like, what what gave you the idea? Well, um, I I heard of him before I saw his art, and it was some years ago maybe five or six years ago, I, I heard him, his story mentioned sort of dismissively and briefly in an interview about like a radio show interview about the, the abductee experience. Okay. And they mentioned David's story as something that was like too out there or ridiculous for them to, to touch upon. Um, and I found that, you know, uh, a little humorous <laughs> and, and thought, well, if, if it's too ridiculous for them to, to, cover then it's something that i definitely want to you know as like a filmmaker and storyteller i want to like look more into is this is this story real is this guy real what's he like and um i found out uh unfortunately that that david had almost no online presence he doesn't really use the internet especially back then so i had to track him down through a neighbor of his who had had done a photo book of his paintings for a year or two. And she gave me his home phone number. Um, I called him and, and the rest is history. But when I, when I finally actually did see the paintings, um, I found them, uh, they were, they were, you know, more than I expected them to be. Um, cause when you hear like outsider art and, you know, self taught and paintings, you, you don't expect them to be great. But when I saw these, they're beautiful and cinematic and, and weird and, um, arresting you know i i you can imagine each one almost as like a scene in a movie so that even you know paired with david's story and just how down to earth he comes across when you meet him or talk with him um it created such a great uh mix of ingredients for a film well that, that's kind of one of the things i loved about the documentary is the paintings did tell a story and you used it that way when you're explaining David's story explaining his experiences each painting actually kind of almost was like a storyboard it was, yeah, I was, I was really quite impressed with that. Um, so how, so then you contacted David, David, what did you think when Brad reached out and called you on the phone about doing a movie well, about your art? Well, we talked for a little while, then I invited him to come over and he, we set up a date and he came over and he, uh, saw the paintings and uh, he has set up cameras and lights and everything, and we started shooting. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, see that kind of that kind of makes sense. Um, and so, when uh, as you're learning more about the story, Brad, were you did did it change the direction of the narrative, or did you know like this is the, this is exactly where I was going to go with it? Yeah, uh, at first I thought um, I would do like recreations of the sort of the key um, encounters in the film. But pretty, pretty shortly after the first filming with David, I realized that wasn't the way to go. Like the paintings are, are incredible on their own to tell the story and it doesn't need any sort of embellishment. And often, you know, honestly, those recreations are pretty cheesy unless you have a big budget. Um, And, and partly just because David comes across so, um, honest and matter of fact in the film, I felt like 
embellishing that um, would flip it in the wrong direction. It would be sort of less documentary and, and something else. Hmm. Yeah, I, I could see that. Plus, I mean, I, th- I think a lot of those scenes would be difficult to film. Like, I don't know if you were to go out in the middle of <laughs> like, the woods or something, hire an actress to wear the alien outfit. Um, so, so let's let's talk about some of these extraterrestrials because I got to say that was, that was one of the interesting things about is the way the uh, the documentary, like the first half, was really about David's story and his experiences he encountered, and then the second half you actually interviewed a lot of people in David's life. And I like that because it kind of showed you the, 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 the point and then how people were um, accepted the story and believed the story. Um, but I got to say, David, it's a hell of a story. Um, so how old were you when you had your first, I guess, uh, encounter with an alien being? I feel I was around eight years old. Eight years old, just a child. Yes. And did you, yes. did you know it? This was the hairy guy, right? Yes, with the glowing eyes. The glowing eyes. And and you said you were frightened. And uh, oh. did, did you run back inside and tell your parents? Like, what was your, act, your reaction? Well, for, I was just, like, startled for an instant. I couldn't move. And the, this little hairy guy was approaching me. And for some reason, I felt as if I was in his eyes looking out at me. Hmm. And... Then suddenly I'm myself again, and I scream, and I scramble back, and I run to the barn, and I turn around, and the little little hairy guy had turned and was walking back into the woods. I went to the house, and I told my mom there was something out at the barn. I didn't know what it was. And she says, oh, come on, it was probably a cow or a deer or something other like that. And she just submits it. You say, yes, it was just your imagination. Yeah, well, you know, act, little kids tend to have an active imagination. Yeah. Um, so, what was interesting yeah. is that I remembered this incident for a few hours, and I went back out to the barn, and I looked at the, little, uh, the line of trees at the end of the field, and the little hairy guy stepped out again. Hmm. Anyway, I just ran away. And he wasn't threatening you. He was just kind of just curious, sort of standing there. But was he walking towards you? Yes. So I guess you. you but he, you I know. didn't get any. I mean, when you're a kid and you see something like this, you think it's like the boogeyman or yeah. something other like that. You know. Yeah, I don't think and I would have been trying to make contact. Thing. I would have been like screaming and running inside. It's probably what oh, I would have yeah. done. Um, so what did your, so did you, this wasn't your only encounter. You had multiple encounters at a young age. And what did your oh, parents yes. and your, your, I guess your, your family, your friends come to think of this? Did, did, were they just very dismissive? Well, they were thinking I was making it up. And one time I had just seen something out of the barn. I think it was the, uh, the uh, praying, praying mantis type. And I ran to the house. And I told Mama there was something out of the barn, and that was it. I got a whipping like you would not believe. Hmm. And anyway, the next day, I'm in the backyard, and there is the woman with two little gray guys. And I go over to her, and I say, my Mama and Daddy don't believe me when I say I see you. I got a whipping. As soon as I said that, I knew she didn't like hearing that. And she just stared right into my eyes, and she says, then don't say anything. After that, I never did. And so after that, you, just, to have, you, you repress these stories. Yeah. Until years later. Did, uh, did you ever think to go, I'm sure back then, you know, psychiatry and child therapy and all that stuff wasn't, wasn't really in vogue. People didn't really do it. But did you ever think later in life, did you ever go to therapy or, or speak to a, a psychiatrist? Uh. Only after I had begun uh, remembering, this is mm. in the, in the 80s, and I spoke to a Jean Mundy. She had, she's died, she died uh, several years ago. Mm-hmm. And but did, she was very interested in my case. Oh, that's interesting. Was she, was she um, a hypnotherapist, David? I guess so, but she never hypnotized me. She just okay. let me speak and tell my story. Okay. Okay. And, and did you find that helpful at the time? Uh, yes, I did. 
It was like a release. Oh, so similar to how you felt about when you started painting. It seemed like painting is very uh, therapeutic, kind of cathartic experience for you. It was. I was with the beings, and uh, one of the beings said, let David do paintings. And I said, okay, I can do that. Anyway, I woke up the next morning, remembered the conversation. But it took me about, I don't know, a week, two weeks, to get enough enough nerve to go up to the studio and start painting. And I was having restless nights and everything. And then one morning I just get up and I go to the studio and I start working. I worked until, oh, I don't know, later that evening. And that night I got such a wonderful sleep. I slept so well. Yeah, getting all of that out of you. So what was the first painting uh, that you painted? Uh, the first real painting I did was the head coming up over the bush. Oh, yeah, I like that one. It was good. Um, I guess one of your famous ones, or I guess one of the ones that was mentioned in the movie quite prominently, was that Virginity Lost painting. Um, yeah. And that refers to a particular night where you uh, first had sex with a, a, a being named Crescent. Um, t- yeah. Tell me about that night. Like, how, how did that happen? Why were you alone in the forest? How old were you? Well, I was about 17 years old. And <clears throat> I was out walking uh, around in the woods. I was think I was heading down to Atuna Lake. Hmm. And I came to a place where there were a lot of trees. There was a lot of shade. And I happened to look over. And there's this woman. She's dressed in dark blue. Just by herself? Hair. Yeah, I was by myself. No, was she by herself? There were no other aliens She was around? by herself. Mm-hmm. And she looked at me. She quickly got up and she came over to me. And I don't know what it was, but I just like, I just wanted to have sex with, with her. I just couldn't help myself. I pulled down my pants. I laid back on the ground and she got on top of me and all at the same time I'm thinking how can this happen how can this be happening what in the world was going on it's a little weird yeah and anyway I reached my climax and I'm looking into her eyes and I pass out and I don't know maybe five or ten minutes later I wake up and I don't remember a thing was she still there, I mean, or had she left? No, she, she was gone. Hmm. And I was there, lying on the ground, with my pants around my knees, and I didn't know why. Huh. And I, I was scared. I got up, quickly uh, put on my pants and everything, and I got out of there. I didn't know what had happened. It was like it had been totally erased from my mind. And uh, that was it. So, was... I don't know if you can recall this, or maybe the memory came back. Was her genitalia similar to that of a human female? Uh, yes, it is. So her vagina felt quite the same. Um, yes. You, you, in the movie you mentioned, or in the documentary, you mentioned that the climax is really painful. It was very intense. And so so was, it, was it a violent sexual experience, or was it, was it very sensual? No, it wasn't violent at all. I mean, she got on top of me, and uh, she worked her body, and I reached my climax. It was quite intense. And uh, how many times uh, did you have sex with her after that? I think perhaps two, maybe three other times. And so she was the type of alien. She was the one with the black hair, kind of uh, sort of a triangular face, very pale, with, uh, with yeah. like br- big, uh, bright like large eyes. Um, But you encountered several other types of aliens as well. The praying mantis one, uh, the little guys. Did you have sex with any other aliens? Well, let me see. There was the uh, praying mantis. There's the little hairy guy. There are the females. There is the, um, let me see. uh, The the tall thin man. The tall thin man, yeah, with the knob on the back of his head. Yes, the man with the knob on the back of his head. But, but um, uh, David, you only had had sexual relations with Crescent and the the tall women, right? Yes. So, did you ever, at that time, 
feel threatened or violated. I remember one of the photos, it, it showed like several of these women holding you and you're and making you ejaculate into a bowl, which seems very unnatural. Like, did you, were you scared? I mean, or did you just kind of go along with it? Actually, that was a rather a funny scene. I was with them and uh, there were several women there, quite a few. And the guy with the knob on his head came over to me and says, you will give all these women babies. And I, it's like, I go, like I go, oh, what? I, 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 there's just no way I can do that. I kind of got scared. And then he was looking at me. And then he laughed. And we go into this room. And there, the, there is this container on, on a table. And I'm looking at the container and I'm looking at him and I say, you want me to make love to a bow? I says, I mean, you know, I like hugging and kissing. Anyway, two other females come over to me and they put their arms around me and they get up close to me. One of them holds my uh, penis and then the other one is stroking my chest and I ejaculate into the container. And you were on their ship when this happened, right? I'm sorry? Were you on their, their saucer, their vessel, when this happened? I think so, yes. Yes, I was someplace. Sometimes I feel like I'm underground, and other times, like, they are in my apartment, or we go up into some type of craft. So what do you think the beings were doing, I guess, harvesting your... I guess your seed to make these hybrid babies. Like, were they bringing them back to their own planet? Like, why do you think they chose you? Good question. I have no idea. I mean, I I have a feeling, a very strong feeling. It isn't just me. It's tens of millions, perhaps hundreds of millions of people worldwide who have had experiences. That is true. And a lot of them are similar. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Especially as children. Yeah, they seem to they seem to uh, to uh, appear to children uh, more frequently than adults. Yeah, um, it's like it's easier to get in touch with children. Yeah, I think maybe you become a little more closed minded or a little more skeptical as you get older. Um, yeah. So, did you ever see any of these these uh, hybrid babies again? Did you ever raise them or? I was, there was a time when I saw them when they were about maybe five or six years old. We were playing hide and seek and I was going to go hide and they were going to try to find me. So I uh, hid behind two of the large women, but the kids found me and then they ran, ran to the base and I had to go hide again. <laughs> And then later, this is like maybe 88, 89, I am with them, and I see this young man, and he's walking toward me, and he looks quite human, but I know he's my son. Hmm. What was interesting is that I was having a hard time seeing the top of his head until I realized he had hair. Yeah, because none of them had hair. Most of them were, uh, I guess, bald or maybe wearing a wig, right? Well, I think the females were. Hmm. But the children that I fathered had hair. Hmm. So do you think they live among us and we, we don't know? Or we can't you know, tell? I I think so. Huh. I know I have seen one or two. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, so in, you actually ended up having a human wife, though, and a human uh, son. What, what did yeah. they think of the, I, I guess, the extraterrestrial family or these, uh, the encounters that you've had? Janice doesn't want to hear it. But my son, I've spoken to my son about it. He saw me doing the paintings when he was a lot younger. And he would ask me what they were about, and I would tell him. But on a very light level, he was like maybe nine years old or whatever. And uh, so, anyway, he grew up with them. So, so he probably had a, a deeper understanding. Did he ever experience any uh, encounters himself? Not that I know of. 
Um, so wh- why do you think Jan- so Janice didn't want to talk about it at all? Did it bother her? Yeah, no, she didn't. I tried to, but no, man, she didn't want to know. She didn't want to hear it. Yeah, she just she just was like, I kind of kind of like your parents. I, was, I don't want to get it. I don't want to go there. Yeah, right. So um, that's right. You you started painting like around uh, the eighties because it all started coming back to you. Um, are you still painting today? Are you still uh, still painting about these experiences? Uh, yes. Well, finally, I got my studio back into some semblance and order. We had brought we were doing some decorating downstairs, and we brought a lot of things to the top floor, and we put them in the studio. So recently, I just got it out, and I'm starting to fix up the studio again. I gotta say, my girlfriend loves your artwork, and uh, she's gonna be very excited to come uh, to, to to see your exhibit at Burbank. Are you gonna fly out here for it, David? No, no, you can't get me on a plane. <laughs> I imagine isn't, after... it, isn't, it, isn't it a little ironic that um, you you're afraid of flying on airplanes, but you can fly on the UFOs, no problem. Well, that's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I mean, I one, I one has turbulence. Yes, <laughs> but there's no turbulence with a UFO. Crap. <laughs> mm-hmm. All smooth flying. It's definitely not a uh, Southwest. Um, well, I'm I'm looking forward to to, to seeing some of your artwork a- actually in uh, in person. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, I'm sure my girlfriend's probably going to want to want to buy some uh, some prints here. Um, Fascinating story, Love and Saucers, Brad. You did a great job with it, and uh, I gotta say, I was uh, riveted the whole t- the whole time. Um, so, Brad, after you after this experience, do you do you feel you believe in uh, in aliens now? Do you believe? Well, it's a comp- complicated um, answer. Uh, uh, I think one thing to make clear is that's interesting is that David has never stated that these are extraterrestrials. It's more, at least for sure, it's more a way to talk about it that everyone sort of immediately understands. Assumed, yeah. Um, yeah, but David has said he doesn't know where they're from or what they are. Uh, the only thing he knows for sure is that the experiences uh, were real to him. So who knows exactly what they are? Um, if it's extra dimensional or, or, you know, extraterrestrial or whatever, um, is one, is one sort of important point. Um, so you don't have to believe in, in extraterrestrials to believe David's story. And I think you don't even have to believe in, in anything, um, supernatural to believe in David's story. You can believe David without, um, just knowing him and listening to him without making that other leap. Uh, and I think what what true. the experiences actually are is that's you know the the million dollar question. And I feel like what um, Professor Jeffrey Kripal says in the documentary is that you know the alien um, or abduction experience isn't really like a new thing. It just is a new sort of terminology or framing for weird mystical experiences that have been happening to human beings for thousands of years, you know, religious experience and psychedelic experience and shamanic experience. Um, so I'm more, you know, I, I don't have really like a set belief, but I'm more in, in tune with, with that one, that, that these are part of the mystical experience pantheon, but what the, the real, you know, content of these experiences are is, is unknown and maybe, maybe can't be known at least like rationally, which is, why I think David painting using art and other people that use art and writing and, and poetry, that's, that's the way to understand these experiences, not analytically or scientifically. Yeah, I think that's part of the reasons why people are so cynical or skeptical of this yeah. experience because it's so subjective. Um, yeah, I did exactly. find that interesting though with the, uh, uh, was he a professor of religious studies? Is, is that the guy that, um, that was explaining yeah. how, uh, yeah, yeah the, the similarities of the shamanic experiences and how people have had these experiences, religious experiences, um, for thousands of years. And, uh, yeah, and they, but the term alien abduction, relatively recent term. Um, grip, great documentary. I wholeheartedly recommend it. Love and Saucers. People, you can check it out at loveandsaucers.com. Uh, also, Brad, let me plug your website. It's bradabrahams.net. Yeah, that's right. And um, just so people know, uh, Love and Saucers is now just got on Amazon Prime. So if you're a subscriber, it's free in the U.S. and the U.K. and Hulu. Yeah, Hulu as well we in the U.S. Hulu. 
Yeah. Yeah. Really- and in other other territories, just like iTunes and, and the standard streaming services. And if you're old school, there are DVDs. Great. And uh, David, I know you don't have a, a, a major online presence, but is there a website or anywhere where people can uh, check out your art? Uh, well, no, I don't have, I don't have anything like that. Okay. But I, I know there's a yeah, book, think, the book that came out. Yeah, that's, that's what I would recommend. Sarah's, Sarah's book, uh, Love in an Alien Purgatory, even though David does not like the title because it wasn't like a <laughs> I definitely but, don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the, the book is good. I would, it, yeah, I would it, recommend the book. And also we're selling, uh, prints and have like a little, gallery of those uh love and 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 david gets a we'll get a percentage when we get the, the sales in oh that's awesome do you guys still keep in touch yeah. now that the movie's wrapped yes we do. In, yeah. oh that's great um guys say i love the documentary thank you for being on the show today it was it was uh, great talking to you all right thank you yeah it was a pleasure